They have very few symptoms or, or they feel like they're very well, but sometimes they also feel very sick. So what does that mean, like airway inflammation? So if you look on the uh, rightmost, no? so this is uh, the, the uh, diagram, no? the airways of a normal person. Okay? So it's, um, uh, and then at the end of that airway, there's a little, the alveolar sac. So that's where the air exchange happens. Anyways, so in the middle, so we actually, uh, the way the underlying that uh, in the patients with asthma, no, even if they feel well, there's already a change. Iba na yung itsura ng airway ng asthmatic, even if they don't feel anything. Okay, so if you notice, no, the walls are thicker, there's more mucus being produced. No, um, the smooth muscles are always ready to um, contract or constrict. Much more so in a patient who has symptoms or is clearing up. Okay. So more mucus is produced, um, more the, the muscles around the airways are more constricted, and so what the patient feels is, uh, or, or so overall, the airways are very tight, no? and the patient feels all these different symptoms. So what are these symptoms? So, like I was saying, so sometimes um, uh, it's a tip of the iceberg. So sometimes patients don't really feel anything um, or have very minimal symptoms, but underlying that there's a lot of um, simmering inflammation that may flare up at any time. Okay. So, what are the symptoms that we usually see in patients with asthma? So, number one is wheeze. Here in the Philippines, um, that's often described as uni. Uh, or hanap. So it's an audible uh, or a sound that the patients make knowing the airways are very tight. Okay. Shortness of breath or fear of sepatia. Chest tightness. Um, some people have a uh, cough as well. No? So sometimes it's very difficult to tell them apart from other diseases with chronic cough. And then that variable expiratory airflow limitation just means look, the, the, the tightening of the airways, um, sometimes it may be a little looser, you know, sometimes it may be tighter. So usually, how we monitor it in our clinics is uh, through this um, machine, uh, this device called the flow um, uh, meter. But um, hopefully we can get more asthmatic patients to do formal testing with formal pulmonary function testing like spiral here on the uh, left corner. So there are different types of asthma, so there's not just one presentation of asthma. So different people, different asthma sufferers, even if they have somewhat similar genetics, so, um, they may have different manifestations. So there's, um, these are just some of the more common ones. So there's the typical, you know, what we see, yung allergic asthma. That's why allergies, ano ba ginagawa ng allergies sa asthma? No? So that's why we're heavily involved also in the management of asthma because for a lot of our patients, the trigger for their asthma is an actual allergy. So on the background also of um, family history or personal history of other allergies, we see this kind of asthma. There's also non-allergic asthma, so the triggers are, are usually or the, or the triggers are usually irritants like pollution, um, maybe the actual temperature of the room. You know? um, then there are also some people. And these are just different ways that the patient may present to us in the clinics. So also, so what we usually see or what our usual um, idea for asthma is, it starts in childhood. But there, and, and then it develops with other allergies during childhood, and we'll discuss, we'll touch a little on that later. But there are actually other um, people who develop asthma in their, uh, in, in adulthood. So I get that all the time from patients who ask me, uh, uh, I thought this was an asthma because I'm an adult already. So there's actually adult onset asthma, or what they call late onset. And then there's also long-standing asthma where the persistence of the tightening of the airways. So usually if the asthma is defined by sometimes it will be relaxed, sometimes not so much. 
But sometimes in patients with asthma, long standing asthma, they can have permanent or persistent air flow diminution. And there's also such a thing as asthma with obesity. So these are very helpful, these, these classifications in helping us manage patients who are given the event. Kasi iba yung treatment po ng allergic asthma or allergic asthma alone versus a patient who may non-allergic asthma or um, asthma with obesity. So again, there are different types of asthma. One of the more common types is allergic. So we make you asthma um, also as a form of respiratory allergy along with allergic rhinitis. Mumbahing ng bahing ko, it's so easy in the morning or colds or post nasal drip, but that's allergic rhinitis. And it's very commonly associated with asthma. Okay, it's what, what they call part of the allergic march. So one by one, these uh, allergies um, pop up in, um, in during the patient's life. Right? So this is what they call the atopic march or the allergic march. So in childhood, we have more of, if you see the blue line, no, that's eczema no, or atopic dermatitis. So skin manifestation of an allergy. And then that usually occurs more uh, or um, that um, appears more uh, first in childhood or even in infancy. And then you have uh, more, more and more cases so, uh, of food allergies also that usually appear in childhood. Then for asthma, you see the green line. The green line asthma may uh, appear later, no? Usually um, in, during childhood. And then also with other different nights, the orange light can also be seen that develop later on in life. So essentially, these are usually they pop up, no? um, they don't have to follow that sequence of eczema and allergies. But um, just know that they can pop up um, at different times in a person's life. Okay? So, what can trigger asthma usually? So asthma is triggered by allergens or irritants in the environment. So specifically for allergens, there's indoor and outdoor allergens. So, and then for irritants, it would be smoke from cigarettes, um, from our vehicular smoke also, and from factories as well in our environment. And then um, other triggers can also be exertion or exercise. Respiratory infections like uh, like me, no? I suddenly got had an upper respiratory tract infection. That's why I made my left ventricle system. So um, you can also have that as a trigger, and that's actually very common now. That's why we're seeing a lot of patients are asthmatic patients with worsening asthma at this time of day as well. Also, excessive laughing. No, sometimes. Um, laughing a lot. And some asthmatics who are that well controlled can also have excessive laughter as a um, So these are uh, examples or the very common allergens that um, patients can encounter. So indoor and within our own homes, house dust mite, cockroach, um, animal hair and mold. So the cockroach, they don't actually bite. They're actually part of the dust along with the dust mite. Um, animal hair, so cat and dog, but also um, sometimes if we have other pets, like hamsters or something like that, or uh, unintentional um, uh, cohabitants like mice, you know, so they, they can also leave um, their uh, dander or their hair um, with their dust and bones. Outdoor, um, uh, things that can affect us will be tree pollen, grass pollen, and weed. Pollen from weeds. Because these are the ones that are that fly in the air. No? It's a misconception that it's always flowers. No flowers, pwede naman, but it's usually you have, you have to uh, be super up close for, you, for it to trigger. No? Unfortunately, for tree pollen and grass weeds, um, it's carried by the air, so it can go anywhere in the day to get um, inhaled or be exposed to these um, Common indoor allergens. So these are the two most common in the entire world, whether you're in the Philippines or um, or uh, abroad, even whether compared to urban and rural settings, it's all the same. 
most well known would be um, our house dust mite here on the right, and on the left, that's of course uh, common household cockroach. Into our allergens, our cute dog and cat. No, unfortunately, sometimes we will have to address also when we have these as our allergens. So um, the in, in the middle, you, know, you have an example of more. So the outdoor allergens will include your tree and the tree pollen. Here in the Philippines, for, for trees, so we have very commonly a pasta. So but not so much this season in your during the summer season, but when you see that the nice pink flower, not the acacia tree, that's actually the pollen bud. No? So for those with allergies to the acacia, it's the time of the year to be aware. Um, and then you want to have grass. So this is actually a, 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 an example here on the bottom that's a line. In the middle and on top is a so other triggers, other than allergens, you know, that are asthma triggers that are um, not allergic to environmental factors such as cigarettes, smoke, industrial waste, and molecular exhaust. And then you can also have exercise. So even if you're trying to be healthy sometimes, but it can also trigger your asthma. So exercise induced bronchial constriction. And again, like I mentioned, viral or bacterial respir uh, uh, respiratory infections. So, um, first of all, like if you're an asthmatic, how will you know what your triggers are? So, you um, we advise um, our, uh, our uh, asthma sufferers to start thinking about uh, or start um, trying to maybe take stock of what we usually observe that uh, triggers our asthma. So is there more, is there usually a place where you get more of these asthma attacks? Is it at home? Uh, is it in school or at work? Is there a time of the day when you feel your symptoms are uh, worse? Is it morning, while you're in work or in school, at night or early in the morning? Is there a season of the year or time of the year uh, when your symptoms are worse? And is there a specific activity? that triggers it, so like, for example, during exercise. So how will you, even, so further, uh, how to elucidate uh, your triggers? So, so you discuss also with your doctor. Sometimes um, uh, it's, it's very helpful to just really um, uh, discuss, uh, not just the symptoms, if you're important patients who are suffering uh, from asthma, um, not just about the symptoms and how to take the medication, you also asked about uh, 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 doctor who did you for the common triggers um, and then asked how also to avoid them or how to lessen exposure to them. Okay? Yeah. So for if you're suspecting an allergic trigger, uh, you may see your friendly neighborhood allergist. Um, there are a bunch of us here in Manila. Okay? But um, in the Philippines, there's also, you know, also well -read. So for us allergists, um, to try to figure out if there's an allergic trigger, we can do a skin test. We can undergo skin care test, um, which is our um, diagnostic test of choice to figure out what the um, allergic triggers are. If for some reason we cannot perform uh, the skin test, then there's actually a blood test that can help us also figure out what the allergy is. So, um, Okay, so do you know your trigger? So how, how do you avoid? So if ever you're asthmatic and you know your, um, or you can even observe from dust exposure that you're already getting triggered, then we suggest these are some of the suggestions to help you lessen your exposure. So a regular daily dusting with the damp cloth, in other words, basahan, right? So um, we call it the wet rag method. So frequent change of bed sheets and pillowcases because dust might tend to collect uh, a lot of them in the bed and the bedroom. So please, and then also try to eliminate um, these dust magnets, stuff toys, carpets, thick curtains, clutter, and certain upholstery fabrics that are friendly for the dust might to enter the bed uh, or the foam, the material of the, of the magnets. Okay. You may also use a vacuum cleaner, um, but there's a specific filter that we 
suggest for patients with dust like um, allergy. And then definitely, if you have dust or indoor allergens, we suggest open the windows, at, uh, even for just a few hours of the day to air. Now, uh, for other triggers, if you have pollen allergies, <coughs> you um, reduce pollen exposure by lessen going out during that pollen season or close the windows specifically for that um, for that season. You may also uh, go out wearing a mask. Now, look at the sad thing, you know, if you're if for our patients with um, uh, uh, animal hair uh, allergies and then it's proven to be the cat, we suggest um, to remove the pet from the home, which is rather sad for some of our patients who are who have beloved pets who they turn out to be But definitely, sometimes we, um, we say definitely don't sleep in the same bed as the pets. So that's the sad cat who may need to be given away in case um, the owner is really allergic. So for um, cockroach allergies, we suggest also regular fumigation um, for cockroach elimination. So take out the dead cockroaches in your eggs so they don't become part of the nest. And please, 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 for any um, asthmatic, don't smoke. If you're the asthmatic, don't smoke. That goes without saying. But also, no smoking. Um, if you are a smoker within the same home as an asthmatic, no, in and around the house, it has been proven that you can trigger a person's asthma even if you smoke outside the house, okay, in the window. Okay, so so you, you, you're going to have to stop smoking for a period. But uh, if you have an asthmatic in, in, um, in your home, um, we suggest not even around the house. Now, in patients with difficult to treat asthma um, or uncontrolled, we suggest um, to for our uh, fellow physicians to refer the patients, and for us also, we introduce the idea of immunotherapy or allergy vaccines. So, these, so they come now in two forms: so injected form, no, so right under the skin, or when it under the tongue, you know, the sublingual, where you. Um, the point of allergen immunotherapy is to make you more tolerant or to be less sensitive to that allergen so you're not um, always getting flare-ups when you're exposed to that <clears throat> so, uh, so, so knowing your triggers, so what's, and then knowing, knowing what we know now that we know what asthma is and, and there are certain things that trigger. So when they're triggered naman, and the patient is uh, having symptoms, how do you treat asthma? So, unfortunately, like other allergies or other um, other diseases, asthma is a chronic disease. So there, it may be quiet for some time, and it may flare up some time, but uh, it, it is a chronic disease. There's no absolute cure for asthma yet. Okay. So we have long, we like to discuss with our patients long-term goals. So, so number one, siempre, of course, how to make the patient feel better. So the treatment is um, centered on that, how to um, make the patient feel better when they have symptoms, and of course, risk reduction of further flare-ups. So <clears throat> this is um, a worldwide, um, there is an international body that we collate all this information about um, asthma, and it's actually a group within um, uh, representatives from our society, even from PC, you know, are um, in contact with uh, with um, our colleagues uh, from this group, the Global Initiative for Asthma, or what they call it. So this is an international collaboration where we get to um, uh, where they uh, put forth recommendations on how to treat asthma. So in general, so what does it mean to uh, symptom control? So we generally ask this from our patients. So how controlled are your symptoms in the past four weeks? Do you have um, asthma symptoms in the day more than twice a week? So it's usually yes or no. no so, uh, and then any night time waking with the asthma, do you need your reliever or do you need medications to help you uh, through an attack? And um, any activity limitation because of asthma? So, um, 
So they answer, and then uh, if you have one to two of these, you are you are partly controlled or partially controlled, and um, not so not well controlled or uncontrolled if you have three or more of those symptoms. Okay? Now, um, so the second the second uh, goal for asthma treatment would be to lessen the risk factors for poor uh, asthma outcomes. So you we assess all of that, no? So we want to lessen um, exacerbations or attacks of asthma and then um, the uh, fixed air flow limitation and then the, of course because uh, patients who have more attacks need more medications hopefully um, also to monitor uh, the medication side effects so hopefully we need less one of these medications for the patients to be able to um, have less um, attacks. Okay, so these are risk factors. And now the last, now if these are the risk factors, are high. Uh, those at high risk um, for poor asthma outlook or a poor outlook in the future for asthmatics. If you've ever been intubated or hope to a ventilator for asthma, um, very um, poorly controlled asthma symptoms, um, having more than one exacerbation in the last 12 months, in the last year. Um, low measurement of that um, of lung function. Um, uh, you have medication, but you're using it uh, in the wrong way. Uh, there's also smoking for the transplant person and other compound the other exacerbating factors like obesity, pregnancy, and um, high level of eosinophils are um, are uh, type of white blood cells that are seen also in asthmatic uh, in allergic patients. Okay. So an other things that can um, other are points in the history that will um, for patients that they get exacerbate but um, uh, and then have a poor outlook for the future, no steroid treatment, no inhaled steroid treatment. Uh, if they're smoking for the patient, um, if there's occupational exposure to the irritant or the allergen, um, if there's a lot of production of mucus, again, the blood is Okay? So actually, this is, uh, again, this, this is a very, um, so just to flash, no, this is how we treat asthma, basically, you know, the recommendations of how, uh, what medications to give depending on the level of control. But, but generally speaking, there's two things in how to treat asthma. Asthma treatment falls uh, either, uh, the medication for asthma usually either fall in the controller medication, so they address that underlying inflammation that earlier slide I showed you where there's like simmering inflammation. Um, so we, um, you use these controller medications long term to address underlying um, inflammation to reduce uh, the risk of the flare up in the future. And then really work for the patient for the symptoms that you feel now or for the acute attacks. Okay, so the reliever medications such as your uh, short acting beta 2 agonists or SAVA or by itself, no? Um, like salbutamol, the most, uh, the more commonly used medication here. Or in combination with an inhaled corticosteroid, um, like permoterol plus or inhaled corticosteroid, are given for um, relief you know, for the symptoms or flare-ups. So the controller medications are usually inhaled steroids. Inhale, so alone or in combination with a long acting beta 2 agonist or lava. So they're there to, in, to reduce that underlying inflammation and then to, uh, to try to control symptoms um, and to reduce the risk for more um, flare ups in the future. Okay. So before, um, if you had well controlled asthma, the previous um, recommendation was okay, here's your back up for your reliever medication because it's um, only uh, when you have flare-ups. Nowadays, no, because of that idea that there's always that simmering tip of the iceberg idea that there's always inflammation under like under 
uh, seemingly well-controlled asthmatic. There's now a uh, move to try to recommend to give, to, even if it's on an asthmatic basis also, to start with an inhaled steroid as well, not just your inhaled reliever, but um, an inhaled steroid with your reliever. So, for better as you know. Other therapies will include um, your, uh, and these may be used for, in conjunction with your other medications, the controllers and the relievers I mentioned before. Um, these are um, for patients with persistent symptoms despite um, higher doses of your inhaled therapies. So you can have your leukotriene, um, receptor antagonist, or uh, morphine class as an example. Um, you have in other inhalers such as diaprofilm by your anticholinergics. Uh, biologic treatments are uh, usually injective treatments and those are also put, viewed as a, a step up or like a controller medication for those with an allergic type of asthma, like your And then you can also have, um, but again this is just additional therapy, we don't really um, recommend it um, as regular therapy, you know, so oral steroids. So again, for allergic asthma, we consider allergen immunotherapy. So um, it, uh, to wrap up, no? so for this season, um, for those of us who, who have asthma, for our uh, patients who also have asthma, this is also the season um, during weather change or as, uh, as the weather gets a little bit cooler and the pollen makeup changes as well. We have a lot of asthmatics this time of the year. So, um, uh, again, uh, hopefully you will keep all of these in mind. And uh, hopefully for any asthmatics out there, um, we'll get you into your doctor's clinics. If you have any questions about knowing your triggers or uh, anything about treatment or how to use your inhalers or your medications. Hopefully we see that more patients um, see their come see their doctors about their asthma. Thank you. Thank you, Doctora. Are there any questions from the audience or from the press? Um, I'd like to start with my question first. Um, Doctora, you showed that there is a way for us to determine uh, what allergen we have, right? You can skin yes, testing. Yes. Uh -huh. So, how do we know if they have skin testing if they go to the clinic? Uh, it will actually depend on the allergies and the type of allergies. Um, usually, uh, we have different sources for our skin test panels. Um, so, it depends on the allergies. Thank you. Uh, because I think it's really very important for you to know that para malaman po natin kung ano yung cause ng allergy. So, maganda siguro talaga magpaskin test tayo lalo na kung panay-panay ng tatay. Sir, may tanong po. Uh, state your name po and uh, your um, station. Thank you very much. I'm Camilo Villantes. Okay, the Philippines. Uh, I have a daughter, my youngest daughter has an asthma no? from time to time, he has some attacks on him. And I don't know because uh, I have four daughters in the family. What caused her to be different from my other daughters? Is it because uh, he was not able to have a breastfeeding or not? Uh, lots of factors, sir. May I ask, are, uh, I'm either you or your wife asthmatic or your allergies? Okay. No, my mom. My wife doesn't have it. Uh, or anyone in the family? Uh, well, she's the only one. Yeah, we've seen, we see that a lot now. So usually we look for family, like I asked, we usually look for family history. But now, it's a problem with allergies. So we're seeing a lot of these new cases coming out with no family history. So, is it environment? Is it global warming? Well, these are all factors that are playing into now that we're seeing a lot of new cases in families with no history. So, it, the, the answer to the question is rather vague, I'm sorry, but um, it's a host of different factors. So, kung wala pong genetics, like we have none in the family, it may be because of the environment, um, exposures, and everything. 
Yeah, because there was a chance, there was a time that uh, she did not bring the, the inhaler, no? Yes. In that particular case, uh, it's, it's quite fatal, isn't it? Uh, yeah, um, there are actually people here that can use the um, uh, the uh, the important cause of death for a lot of um, around the world. So that's why we always suggest that even if you feel well, no always have your inhaler, at least your backup inhaler with you. I don't um, Schools should have, schools definitely should have their own, um, like at least a nebulizer. Um, if you're also this magic, be aware of your, I guess your surroundings, so wherever you can possibly either uh, uh, get an inhaler or nebulizer. So it's very important to bring, always bring your backup. Suppose uh, she's not able to bring it. And about particular uh, remedy, no? Sa 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 to reverse the, the tightening of the airways, there's really nothing um, that sugar can do or phalanger scar can do. Sometimes, even for exercise induced asthma, not even resting can make it, it will, will, uh, will only make a small difference if you maybe need to use an inhaler or an S or the Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, Gabriel and Julie of DWBL. Yung po bang ano po? Yung po bang pagkain ay po pwedeng ipakaalimji din? Pero sabi niya iba yung mga matatanda po. Kainin mo lang kahit kahit na allergic ka, mawawala din yan. Magkakaroon din ng dalawang may immune ka rin. No, I'm sure that. Oh, I hear that all the time. So yes, food uh, can be triggered for allergies, so even asthma, so even asthma. Um, yung pong idea na paunti-unti na si may immune heart, uh, if a child or if a person is really allergic to that something, then you can't go, no? We may be setting that person up for, kasi parang yung wanting exposure, no? Parang mas yung susunod na exposure ko, yung susunod na kain, baka mas malala lang yung symptoms. Yung so, susunod pa, baka mas, parang more and more naging violent or more and more worse, uh, worse and worse po yung uh, reaction in mo ganyan. So, uh, hindi po totoo na yung pausti-unti na yung iba yung immune. Meron po na allergies na naaawit. Oh, no? Some allergies in childhood, sometimes ito na rin yung allergies ng milk or yung uh, allergies sa egg. Um, pero, uh, uh, we, give, we suggest to the, kunyari mga bata, kung sinusuggest namin sa mga magulang, stop niyo po muna. Give a period of around 6 months to a year na hindi niyo po kapakainin or hindi pa painom ng milk, tapos we retry. Pero sa harapan po ng doktor. Sa klinik ng doktor, kasi delikado po po kung react sa bahay. Uh, do, would you want to recommend some medication na uh, over-the-counter na bibili? Kasi po, uh, kagaya rin lang yung uh, problema ni Kuya Milo, just like me, my sons, also suffering from allergy, na hindi po siya pwede niyo mo mas kasi, naluwan sa naka-ana lang pa siya na po siya sa labas. Nagtitriggery ang kanyang, ano, yung kanyang, ano, asthma. Asthma, yes. Um, may inhaler na po siya. Nagkabakay ng inhaler meron po siyang maintenance na ito. Um, it would be very important. The most common na ginagamit ko dito sa Pilipinas na baka together with yung salbutamol. I don't want to see the brand. There's, a, there's new, uh, new, ano naman kasi, um, uh, brands in the market, but uh, number one that's been being used is baka po yung salbutamol. And you can use it po yung pinakamadalas na ginagamit sa nebulizer. But, even then, nowadays, no, dahil nga po parang base po sa mga research mo, dahil nga laging merong underlying problem of that inflammation, yung fighter airway na 
Dahil na po yung base ay talaga ng tao may asthma. We suggest baka dapat merong maintenance na po. Parang dapat meron na po siyang regular na inhaler na kinatik heavy day. Para maiwasan po, manetri. Baka hindi na po naglalaro yung, ano, yung sa labas. Kasi mausok talaga dito sa Maynila, so baka hindi na po siya nakakalabas. And that's not a good thing, di ba? Ang gusto natin sa bata, maglalaro sa labas, pumunta sa school, and daily, and be able to play with his friends. Kung na, na, dahil po sa asthma, yun ay nagiging issue. Play or school, no? Dapat po, buong pero na rin talaga siyang maintenance. Ano po? Dok, ah, hope you don't mind po. Meron po kasi yung nagpapatanong. Bakit daw yung ibang doktor, magaling daw mag-advise. Magaling magpakilang nagkamot. And yan, yung sarili nila, hindi nila magkamot. Ano ba ang usually dahilan nito? Or may mga problema lang? Or are speaking for reality? Ako yung doktor, yung ibang personality. Yes. Um, Thank you very much, Dr. Thank you. 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 Thank pero meron po ba nang dito sa Pilipinas ko po? Unfortunately, that is what our, yung advocacy ko ng grupo namin, the Philippine Society ko man namin na ito, Allergy Asthma and Neurology. Gusto po namin available dito. Now what we have here is yung bote. Bote na pupuksan nyo pa, pupunin nyo pa yung syringe or dito sa dilipidia, yung gamon, tapos i-inject nyo. Mas maganda po sana, we could have the every pen here. Pupuksan nyo lang yun, tapos you can even use it through your room for severe allergy. So we're working on that. We're trying to bring it in. For any patients that may concern about the every pen, we try to make it available through our society and we'll give our email address siguro. So, if it's an issue of looking for it, we will help you look for it. But for now, foreign source are So, um, any other questions? Um, last question, um, before regarding celebration of Astro Week, are there any activities lined up for um, for the public to go to for more information? Uh, well, actually, um, we celebrated it earlier World Asthma Day is really May 1. <laughs> so we've uh, done mga dissemination in our own hospitals. But um, uh, it, World, Allergy, World Asthma Day is usually May 1. So it's usually that time of the year na mas nagkakaroon ng activities for us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So, if you want to take sound bites for interview Dr. Tara personally, you can just approach her. And we're just going to prepare for the next part of the follow-up. Thank you. Hello, Dr. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the second part of our PCP Health Forum. I'd like to welcome our friends from the media and also um, our speakers. Uh, Benjo Bigatin for the lineup for today, no? Um, we also have a uh, former health secretary um, who is here. Um, so um, this will be moderated by Dr. Jean Solante, who is currently a board member of the Philippine College of Physicians and past president of the Philippine Society for Microbiology and Infectious Diseases. So um, this is, as you can see, no, a panel of experts. So now let's listen to what the experts have to say about the current epidemic, which is a very big problem in our country. So, Dr. Solante. Thank you, Lingo. And thank you also for the opportunity that uh, you gave us here to uh, expand on this very important topic, which is dengue. But before I'll proceed with the discussion, I have to introduce the dignitaries, the high-profile uh, power pack experts. These are the real experts. And uh, of course, 
would like to uh, uh, acknowledge the presence of our former DOH Secretary, Dr. Esperanza Cabral, who is our uh, motivator. She always motivates us to our, in our advocacy in Dengue. Then first we'll have to start here, the uh, President of the Philippine Association of Patient Organization, Ms. Gurley Lorenzo. She represents the patients, and then, of course, former Philippine College of uh, Physician President and former Philippine College of Chest Physician President, Dr. Charles Yu. And then we also have a representative from the Philippine Medical Association, no less than the Vice President of PMA, Dr. Benny Atienza. And of course, I think most of all, all most of you here, uh, you. you, Dr. Lulu Bravo, no? is she's our one of the experts in vaccines, authority in vaccines in the Philippines. Uh, she's representing the Philippine Foundation for Vaccination, and uh, she's also our advisor in the uh, technical working group of the PSMI, the Adult Immunization Group. And then, uh, to my left, I'll start with the current president of the Philippine Society for Microbiology and Infectious Diseases, Dr. Mario Canaligan. And then we have also a board member of the PSMID, uh, Dr. Nimpa Putong. And the last but not the least, our uh, current president of the Pediatric Infectious Disease Society of the Philippines, Dr. Anna Maungi. So, the, the current uh, state of dengue infection in the Philippines really calls, or is really alarming. Okay? If you notice, the Department of Health has uh, declared a dengue alert last July because of the unprecedented increase in the rate of uh, dengue cases for the past year compared to last year's. And uh, isa sa mga tinitingnan din natin, paano natin matutulungan ang Department of Health or everybody here, no? How do we inform the public? What is the importance of information? How to prevent dengue? And probably the other aspect here is really sustain awareness on the menace of this infection. So before us, uh, uh, I call each one of them. We'll have a short presentation from Dr. Charles Yu to present the actual experience of a doctor who died of uh, dengue, just to create that uh, start the awareness of this particular topic. Charles? Happily, this presentation and it's more so. Uh, there is nothing more to illustrate the importance of dengue, which I know you, uh, everyone is so concerned about, than to, I guess, share stories. The first story is the story of a good friend of mine. He was a past president of the Philippine College of Justice. He was an advocate in eating control of uh, He had been doing a lot of studies in the burden of COPD, which is also a big problem, and he was doing field studies. In the course of doing the field studies, he developed it. So, first episode. A year later, he continued to do the studies because he thought it was important. Despite the warning by his wife, who's also a doctor, and all the precautions, putting all the lotions, etc., he developed a second day and he died. That story is in uh, one paper. He was one of the leaders in the pillars. He was actually the father of clinical health. If the grandfather of Kepi is Dr. Ernie Domingo, Tato Dantes was the pioneer in clinical Kepi of which I belong, and others, Jeffrey, like Kogi Dantes, we all belong to that family. He's a great loss. He died at the age of 50. And he saw the last part of that article. So great a man with unfinished work dying from a mosquito boy. So that, that is the story that I want. So that his death will not, uh, well, he has touched the lives of many of us, and we continue to be inspired by him. But one of the reasons his wife wants to also ask to share the story is to say that Dengue does not spare anyone. 
whether you're poor or rich, mighty or not, it will hit anyone. And so far, talo pa rin tayo ng mosquito at the virus. My second story is very personal. In May, I came out in the summit that was organized by Lulu and the late Autora Montalban at the same. So, and I for the first time went public, although CP President about BCCP, I went to San Julia. But I wanted to share the story of my son. I have a son who was vaccinated with the virus. Okay? I was scared because in my hospital, people were dying left and right of the AK. Our hospital in Las Marinas was overflowing with patients with the AK. And so, the controversy was already raging about the possible risk of the AK vaccine. But I and my wife made an informed decision that we will vaccinate our son. And today, I sleep more soundly in the evening because my, I know my son is protected more than my others. The other thing is I share this with the hundreds of thousands of families whose children were vaccinated. Now, many people know that before the mass vaccination of 830,000, there were already large vaccinations involving the private sector, involving many of the interviews that infectious diseases in the family, including the family of our president, the, the daughter and the grand daughter. So we all share. We were concerned that we wanted to protect our children from dengue. And so this is some of the messages that we hope we will say. The vaccine is only one of the weapons in the war against dengue. Vector control, prevention, aggressive management, fluids. Those are all important, but we should not deprive our countrymen of an available weapon to prevent further dengue. It is not a weapon for the current outbreak. Kahit makunahan pa yung mga batang yan, at impact niyan in the next. And my last part is really more a statistics because I'm more known as a TV advocate rather than dengue. So I did this amateur tabulation of statistics comparing dengue and TV last year and this year. Look at the total numbers identified between 2016 and half of 2019 up to June, uh, reported by the This will certainly exceed the 2018 numbers. The reason I raised that is because I think one of the senators actually said that there were also these numbers of inpatient field health claims of the number of cases of dengue. There is a little discrepancy and that needs to be corrected. But if you believe the numbers, the 174,000 in 2019 of field health, double that number, that number almost approaches the total TB patients that we already see. Okay. Economic burden. Ito yung field health reimbursements. Last year, it was 2.4 billion. In the middle of this year, 1.7 billion. Remember, the field health does not fully compensate the inpatient cost. In, ano lang siya, partial, maybe 50%. So more than that by economic burden. Hindi pa kasama dyan yung outpatient, dengue patients. Hindi pa kasama dyan yung loss of income from families guarding their children when they are confined. So that economic burden almost approaches the 8 billion. I raised this because there were concerns in previous year. Bakit daw hindi TV? So me, the champion of TV, are saying, bakit hindi dengue? Dengue is like the house on fire. TV is like the termites that are going to destroy. But both are very important to be treated. I end with my own statistic in my hospital, which I just got a few minutes ago. In our university hospital, this is the current latest statistics for July. We have 130 pediatric dengue cases. We have three deaths. None of them had previous vaccines with infection. We had four infection cases. They all got well. We had 34 uh, adults with dengue, and no one had infection. If you look at the latest statistics of DOH, look at the regions where they are highest because they're now about to declare a national emergency. Bakit kaya Region 3 at NCR nawawala sa listahan ng mga they are also the same areas where the vaccination was either complete or partial. My own 
uh, my, my own experience and my wife is, she had one ten, ten bucks of face when it was wild, and only one dose was given. So these are the things that I think should set the tone for this press conference. I asked the media to be partners. In vaccine, it's the range. But we must not forget that better information and better attention to care from both the families and the doctors are needed. And I, I'm very happy that the multi-sector um, groups here let all the weapons be available to our people. Bakit tayo lang sa buong mundo wala ng availability ng lahat ng weapons, including the vaccine. Thank you. So reading from that line, better care, better clinical management, since then can affect that the majority of our children. I would like to hear the president of the PhD, Dr. Lana Ong Liu, to give us uh, background, more information on how do we, or how can we help our children uh, cope out or prevent the uh, dengue, Anna? Thank you, Dr. I'm sure that we tayo okay, kay kanya kanyang personal experience about dengue. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure meron po tayo kapamilya, kakilala, na nagkaroon ng dengue. So hindi po kaiba itong sakit sa, sa ating lahat. Uh, alam natin dapat matakot tayo or at least maging concerned pagka merong kapamilya nagkakaroon ng lagna. Uh, lalo na sa panahon to when we know that uh, dengue is something that is spreading. So, um, kaya nakatuon ang pansin ng uh, medical community sa bata pag dengue ang pinag-uusapan uh, is because uh, karaniwan sila yung uh, madaling kalata ng sakit. No? What do I mean when I say this? Uh, yung clustering na tinatawal or pagkukumpul-kumpul ng mga nagkakasakit, karaniwang nangyayari in settings where kids congregate. So, nababalitaan natin para eh, kung may nagkasakit, hindi kaya uh, umalat dahil magkakasama sa school. No? So, isa po yun sa mga uh, uh, characteristics ng dengue dito sa atin sa ating bansa. Nagsisimula ang pasukan, doon halos tag-ulan. Pag tag-ulan, doon din ang pagkalat ng sakit. Pag umalat ang sakit, siya pa siya kakalat, hindi sa mga nagkukupol-kupol na parati namang karaniwan ay bata. No? So, uh, the reason why uh, PSP and also the Philippine Pediatric Society, who I'm representing in this forum today, uh, wants to be involved in this issue is because a lot of the patients who are uh, presenting with this disease uh, happen to be children. And we would like to emphasize na napakahalaga nung tinatawag na early health seeking behavior. Uh, hindi naman natin sinasabi na lahat ng tilalag na ay necessary to make dengue. Pero, uh, maganda po malaman kung dengue nga yung pinagumula yung landat na yun kasi meron po tayong dapat na gawin para matulungan itong pasyente yung makaraos na maayos galing po sa sakit. Okay. Before we open the floor, no, I just have to get some of the uh, reactions of the panel okay? because I know later on you really have a lot of these questions. So for that's for the Tibia, Mark, for the adult. Siyempre, kung mga bata na apektuhan, pati na rin mga may edad. Recently lang, no, nung nag-adult down isang pasyente na 74-year-old, no, ang history lang niya nilagnat ng dalawang araw. No. Sabi ko, alam niyo po, saan mo ba kayo ang galing? Sabi niya na kumento, ah, kasi galing kami sa state sa muna. Asa pa po? Ah, nagpunta kami ng Cebu last week. Ah, galing po kayo doon. So, ito lang pong sabihin sa inyo, kailangan po natin mas kurado kung merong ding dengue, zika, o tipong gunya. Kasi yung mga yan, lahat meron dito sa Pilipinas. So, true enough, nung pinag-check ko yung dalawa, kasi hindi naman available na zika, nag-positive yung dengue NS1. And this is a 74-year-old female. And you will note na hindi lang talaga sa mga bata. So, kahit ang mga malidad, posibleng magkaroon ng dengue. At napaka- napaka-critical na magbigyan sila ng tamang advice kung ano dapat gawin. Kasi hindi naman dapat doon matatapos eh. Hindi porke na na-diagnose natin sila. Kailangan natin magbigyan ng uh, tamang instructions on kailangan gawin. No? Hindi, hindi ko naman sinabi kailangan matagay yung 
yung pasyente, pero sinabi ko, kailangan marami sa ito ng tubig, kailangan matay din ang ihing, at kailangan din matayan ang mga komplikasyon o yung tinatawag natin warning signs. No? So, yung warning signs, kasama din yan sa ibang monitor. No? Um, so, pag nagkasakit, importante magbigyan ng tamo advice para mag-monitor ng pasyente o ng mga, ng mga magulang kung bata pa yung um, sakit. Kailangan sabihan na kung may lumabas na warning sign, kailangan siyempre agad agad admit. No? Pero hindi rin, hindi rin nararapat na gano'n lang matatapos. Eh. Importante, pabigyan din natin ng instructions na dapat din pati yung mga heart rate kung pwede matayan, pati yung siyempre iba pang komplikasyon kagaya ng pagkukumbulsyon o kaya para nakitang siyan o pagsusupa. Siyempre, importante mabigyan sila ng instruction na nilagad ng bata o ang pasyente sa ospital para mabigyan ng tamang, um, tamang paraan ng paggagawa. So, a little background lang po para sa ating media na We know that dengue is the fastest spreading mosquito viral infection globally. And according to epidemiology, the increase is no more than 30-fold. Eh. From Asia, it has reached Latin America, Africa, no? Pacific. And when we, yung, yung epidemiology natin, the most recent from January 1 to January 29, 2019, it has increased 85%. That's why on July 15, na, na National Dengue Alert has been declared by the Department of Health. Now, the most common majority of those that are affected belong to 5 to 9 group. The group age is between among 5 to 9 year old. And then followed by 6 to 10. No, 10 to 14. So, ito yung vulnerable age na kailangan natin bantayan. Because the data also shows na yung most common death, the majority of this death, also belong to this vulnerable age, 5 to 9, followed by, uh, 5 to 9 ang most common parin siya. Now, we need to capacitate yung importante po ang health education. Since ito yung mga bata, kailangan alam nila kung ano ba yung dengue, no? Uh, maraming social media, business, 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 very active dyan, no? Um, importante talaga because in the beginning, ang dengue with no warning signs, and severe dengue, they all manifest as one and the same. Walang pagkakaiba yan eh. It's only during the critical phase, no? That's when the fever starts to rise, no? Dadating ang mga warning signs, no? That, na kailangan natin pangyayon. Again, importante po ito for everybody to know. Ano ba yung seven warning signs na ito? Number one, ito yung tinatawag natin ang persistent vomiting. And then, yung causal bleeding. And then abdominal pain, persistent, severe abdominal pain na kahit ang ibigay mo na pain reliever na hindi siya nawawala. Okay? And based on clinical experience, most of these dengue patients na nagpapakomplain ng abdominal pain that is persistent, no? impending siya. Watch out. And then there is also liver enlargement. By the laboratory, we'll see a decrease in platelet and a sudden rise of hematocrit. Ngayon, pag medyo mahina po tayo sa arithmetic, nakikita natin 50% pataas ang sa hematocrit nito. No? And then, by you have to ask the patient. Pagka may pleural diffusion siya and abdominal uh, fluids, no? so these are what we call plasma leakage. Plus, means, sa laboratory, pag sudden drop ng platelet, no, telester 100, hematocrit, naging hemocositic, plus, meron ng infusion sa katawan. And finally, meron tayo tinatawag na letter G. No? Yung parang nanghihina ang mata. So, this, this needs to be considered. Importante, anticipatory no, management. Alam natin na early diagnosis, ito ay dengue dahil na nag-hyperendemic na tayo. And then, ito ay dapat close monitor. Especially when the fever starts to rise, na wala ang lagnat. And then there is one of the seven warning signs. No? Magpakonsulta na po tayo. I think uh, the emphasis here is the early recognition. And you have to know the ano yung mga symptoms no? nakikita natin na uh, dapat magpatingin tayo sa doktor. Hindi po kayo isang yung lagnat lang yan, hindi yung ordinary. No? So it really is important the awareness of the different clinical manifestations and uh, warning signs. So, we'll segue and 
the most important or probably an important aspect of that is always prevention. Agree? Yeah. And I think the Department of Health has emphasized the 4S. And I have 4S. Search and destroy, then self-protection measures, and then seek early consultation and basically spraying and fucking. But at this point, we'll ask uh, Dr. Bravo the other aspect of uh, prevention aside from the conventional uh, method of prevention. Probably at this point, Sigolo, we can also talk about the importance of vaccine. Hello? Thank you, Jean. Let me be clear. Ako po ay para sa pag-iingat sa lamok. Yun po ang tinatawag natin. And even experts all around the world agree that there are two prong protection against dengue. That's vector control. Palisin po yung lamok. Pero alam naman, hindi mo naman ka lang tala, hindi mo po mangyayari na mawala ang lamok dito sa mundo. And vaccination. And as uh, I am the executive director of the Philippine Foundation for Vaccination, which we set up 20 years ago in response to getting para po malaman ng mga tao ang value ng bakuna. Yun po ang role ko dito para sabihin sa inyo kung ano ang role ng bakuna. Natatanda niyo po noong 1990 si Dr. Flavia na po ang nanguna tuwing April po sa loob ng isang buwan mahigit na lima hanggang siyam na milyong baka ang binabakunuhan laban sa diphtheria, pertussis, tetanus, polio. Tapos naging measles pa noong 2004. Nagkaroon po tayo niyan. Alam niyo po ang nangyari? Na-eradicate po ang polio noong 2000. Sinerebrate po natin yan nung wala ang polio natin sa Pilipinas. At noong 2005 po, nawala ang measles. Zero measles po tayo noong 2005 hanggang 2008. Kaya nga po yung ating mga young doctors, hindi na alam po ano yung measles eh. Akala nila yung dengue. Akala nila yung measles, nag-umpisa ang outbreak ng measles. At marami po sa mga young doctors, akala din nila Kaya po, pinagsasama-sama na kayo yung measles doon sa dengue. Hanggang nagkaroon tayo ng outbreak early this year. Ang aking pong pitch sa ngayon is, ang bakuna po, Bago siya hilabas sa publiko, bago po siya gamitin, dumadaan po yan sa mahabang proseso ng pagnanaliksik, ng pagsubok, ng paggawa ng mga tinatawag po nilang clinical trials. And I must disclose, ako po ay clinical trialist for the last 30 years. Mag-umpisa po dun sa kombinasyon ng mga bakuna. Di ba nung araw, isang tulong sa tira, isang tulong sa pertusis, Ngayon po, padami ng padami sa isang tulog, meron na kayo anim, pitong protection. Marami pong development ang bakuna. Pero marami pong bakuna na hindi pa nagagawa at nag-umpisa pa. Yung malaria po, isang daan at pitong pa. Isang daan at limang pong taon na pong pinag, pinagpapanalisipan. Meron na po ngayon nag-umpisa. Dahil yung malaria, agad din ng lamot yan. Alam niyo ba na ang lamot ang pinakamahalagang pump na namamatay, na mamamatay ng tao. Alam niyo po ba yun? Na ang lamot ang pinakadilikadong animal sa buong mundo. Siya po ang pinakamaraming pinapatay na tao dahil sa malaria, sa dengue, sa mga chikungunya, zika, jerky, Lahat po yan dahil sa lamok. Kaya yan po ang pinakamalakas na mamamatay tao. Alam niyo ang pangalawa? Tao. <laughs> sa susunod po, andan yung doon yung ahas, andan yung mga aso, tigre, ganyan po. Pero tandaan niyo po, lamok ang pinakamalakas po mamamatay tao. Kaya vector control po. Ang role po ng bakuna, gaya ng sinabi ko, ay upang pangalagaan naman dahil Pwede po ma-eliminate yung polio na eliminate. Yung smallpox po ang unang-unang na-eliminate. Dalawang pong da at dalawang, dalawang daan at dalawang pong taon na po, 220 years na ang bakuna since 1798. Ano po ang nangyari sa mundo? Tumaas po ang ating mga nagliligtas sa mga sakit ng hysteria, pertussis, sterina, di ba sa miso, sa meningitis, tumaas po dahil sa bakuna. Kaya po yun ang naging para karan ko sa buhay. Ipahamahagi sa mga tao ang kahalagaan ng bakuna.
bakuna. Kaya nga po ang sinasabi natin, ang bakuna po ay isang social human right. At nandito si Gurley, patient rights po ang ating pag-usapan mamaya. Ano ang dapat mangyari kung ikaw ay merong tool, meron po tayong prevention laban sa isang sakira. Ipagkakalit po natin, yun po ang aming tanong. Thank you, Lulu. And uh, I think we need also to get the uh, statement from our Vice President of the Philippine Medical Association, Benny. Kukwento ko lang po ang role ng Philippine Medical Association. For your information po, ang Philippine Medical Association po ay tinatagpa ng 1903. Siya po ang uh, uh, 116 na po siya. Ang binubuo po ito ng Ang mga doktor po sa Pilipinas ngayon ay 140,000. Yan po ay nakaregist sa PRC. At ang member po ng PMA is 80,000 at ang active po is 44,000. Consisting of, yung po sa 80,000, more than 40,000 po yung mga specialist. Ano po ang role ng ating Philippine Medical Association? Nandito po kami para supportan po ang ating mga expert. Yan yung ating media. Dapat yung experts po yung ating tinatanong yung mga nag-aral kung sa bakuna, kung sa, sa diseases po, yung, yung mga experts. At narito rin po kami kasi nung uh, two years ago, pinamunuan ng Philippine Medical Association na unity statement. Sinat namin sa unity statement ang aming full support sa ating uh, DOAs. Nandun po ang ating DOAs, former secretary, Dr. Akabra, Dr. Charles Yu, Dr. Lulu, at iba pa mga espesyalista. Kasi nung two, two years ago po, nagka-outbreak na uh, measles. At, uh, bakit ito? Kasi bumaba po yung uh, mga nagpapabakuna sa measles at lahat na ating bumaba po yung uh, ang mga dami yung mga nanay na takot uh, due to the vaccine scare na mali po ang perception ng mga tao. Ngayon, kinukorek po namin yan. Kasi ang bakuna po isa sa pinaka, uh, pinakamabisang prevention na sakit. At saka ang PMA po ay gagawa po ng task force para, para sa dengue kasi po meron pa kami 190 component societies sa buong Pilipinas sa 17 regions ng Pilipinas. At kagagaling ko lang po sa induction ng medical society sa Iloilo, uh, Iloilo, Antique, and Capiz. Napakarami po, thousand-thousand po ang nag kakaroon po ng dengue doon sa area uh, at saka po uh, ultimo ang mga hospital po doon ay uh, punong-punong po ng mga pasyente lalo ng mga bata. Mostly po ang apektuhan doon kasi hindi po sila nagbigyan ng, ng denbox siya doon kaya marami po ang nagkasakit doon kasi kung makikita ninyo ang mga naapektuhan na, 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 na ngayon ay yung mga preschoolers kasi sila yung Kasi yung mga dati, yung mga grade 5, grade 6, ano yun yan, sa, sa, sa apat na region. At, at kung tutusin po, ako po isang pediatrician din, at kung makikita ninyo, bakit ang, ang isang aim po ng Philippine Medical Association yung awareness, ang sunod po dyan, prevention, then treatment. Ano po ang gagawin namin? Pupunta po, gagawa kami ng mga lecture para sa mga compound societies, At the same time, pupunta rin po kami doon sa mga community kasi dapat po nilang malaman ang sitima sa dengue. Unahin natin, dapat ay may lagnat. Kaya ang anong tinuturo namin? Dapat lahat ng bahay ay may thermometer na monitor ang lagnat. Bakit po maraming namamatay sa dengue? Kasi hindi na dadala sa doktor, tatlo, apat na araw na lagnat. Hindi nila alam, wala silang thermometer, hindi nila, hindi nila monitor. Tapos, papapasukin ang mga bata. Meron po kasi ang pasyente na tuwa ang, ang lola kasi nawala ang lagnat pinapasok. Nag-ano po sa school po, nag, uh, doon siya nawala ng mahalay, doon po siya nag, nag-shock. Nung pagdating sa ospital, wala na. Kasi natutuwa po yung mga magulang na wala ng lagnat. Tandaan po natin na ang dengue, pag nawala ng lagnat, doon po bumababa ang platelet count. Yun yung sinasabi namin na meron po ang pasyente Sabi ng nanay, ang platelet po, 40,000 na lang, 20,000. Sabi ko sa kanila, ang ginagamot natin ay ang bata, hindi po yung laboratory. Kaya minomonitor po namin ang blood pressure, minomonitor na ang pulso, kung may tubig ang baga, at komplikasyon ang dengue. 
Kaya po, ang, ang napakahalaga po sa aming mga doktor ngayon, ang malaman kung saan merong mga outbreak at para na na-advise na po namin ang mga mga pasyente at saka dapat inireport nila sa DOH. Doon po sa amin, sa San Jose, meron po kami dalawang bata na namatay. Hindi na na umabot sa doktor. Kasi nga, kulang sila ng knowledge eh. Akala nila nilagnat lang, hindi nila alam ang sintomas ng dengue. Kaya ang importante po yung awareness at saka prevention saka po yung treatment. Kaya ang role po ng Philippine Medical Association ay parating po ang mga kaalamang ito, makapaggawa po kami ng statement para po ang ating confidence sa bakuna at saka yung prevention po sa dengue, hindi lang po dengue, isa ba, isa ba po pong sakit. Kasi pa, na, ano lang po eh, parang bumabalik-balik lang po yung problema na, 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 sa Pilipinas ng ating mga nangyayari. Nagka-operate mo ng measles, tapos yun yung dengue, ano kaya ang susunod, di ba? Eh kung uh, ano tayo, sa, sa experts po tayo na nakikinig, hindi po tayo na, kasi ang nangyayari po yung bali-balita na mali-mali. Ang aling po natin yung mga specialist na po ang pakinggan, yun lang po masasabi ng Philippine Medical Association. Thank you, Betty. So, ang pinakalas, of course, yung patient. No? So, pakinggan natin si Ma'am Burley about the patient right and what we should know sa puntong ito ng dengue uh, outbreak. Okay, magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Ang Philippine Alliance of Patient Organizations is a alliance of 32, at least 32 disease-specific patient groups. We have existence we have existed since 2011 at ang aming um, uh, focus po ay yung makapag-participate ang mga pasyente sa mga polisiya at yung pang siyempre po ay isulong ang patient's rights. At malaking bahagi po ang ginawa namin role na pagsulong din po ng universal health care. Ang aming masasabi po sa, sa nangyayari po dito sa, sa dengue, yung epidemic po, ay kami po ay nalulungkot, lubos na nalulungkot sa nangyayari. Kasi po unang-una, nakikita namin na ang gobyerno ito, ang tawag mahal namin dito sa, sa, sa patient groups, this is parang the golden years of health sa amin. Kasi tingnan nyo, napasa yung National Integrated Cancer Law, PWD Law, Mental Health Law, ay HIV Law. Kaya kami nagtataka, bakit ito, nindengi, ay meron ng solusyon, meron ng paraan para ma-prevent, ay dumami pa. Kaya kami ay parang nagtataka, bakit hindi na-prevent o hindi na-address ng gobyerno ito when in fact, they are very good in health. So, yun po yung isa namin yung pinagtatakan. At sana-sana talaga na ma-address kagad ito. Kasi epidemic na po. Paano mo na na nasasabi? Kasi po nakababalo kami sa ospital. Nakikita po namin na imbis nakatutok yung mga kawawang doktor at nurses sa chronic illness, dun sa cancer, dun sa ano, ang nangyayari, nadidisplace mga nga po yung mga cancer kasi inaakyat po ang mga dengue patients sa ward, tapos nasdun na po, idor na po. So, naisip namin na invest na yung resources ng hospital, mapunta talaga sa cure ng chronic illness, ito pa inaasikaso nila. So, napakaisip na naman kami, ano ba ang priority talaga so, yun nga po eh, parang nako-confuse kami ngayon na may solusyon, hindi ginawa ng solusyon. So, sana po mabalik. Mabalik po yung prevention no dengue. Kasi po, may, may gamot eh. Hindi katulad ng cancer, ng ibang ano, ang hirap-hirap kami po mga pasyente. Talagang kung saan-saan kung pagpupunta para lang makakuha ng gamot para sa chronic illness, ito meron na for prevention, hindi pa nagawa. So, or inalis. So, sana yun ang aming posisyon. Ibalik yung point. Ando na eh. Hindi natin alam bakit tinapos eh. Yun din yung isa na sana pag mga gantong mga cases, 
Huwag na sana kung ipolitisize itong mga ganito. Kasi ho, ang namamatay po ay mga bata. Mga bata na sana ay sila yung magiging future leaders ng ating bansa. So, it's a lot of waste of resources, of time, of lives. So, yun po ang aming posisyon na sana we know this government is for health. So, be true to its form. Be pro-health. Yun lang po. Thank you, Ma'am So, at this point, uh, we'll open the floor for Q&A and ask the question, identify yourself, and if you want to direct the question to the person that is uh, you want to answer, then you have to just can say it, okay? Good morning. Una -una, I'm Julie De Guzman of DWBL. Congratulations sa nag-organize nito. Ngayon ko na nakita yung mga experts. Ayan, kompleto. Uh, gusto ko malaman kay Dr. Lulu, kasi si Dr. Lulu talagang trying hard na si Kapi na maibalik yung tiwala, di ba, sa bakuna. And uh, that's your expertise. And I'm happy na nakita ko kita ulit. Actually, produkto po ako na ng bakuna. Ibig sabihin, Ah, uh, marami ko pa nung panahon ko ha, baby pa lang, in-injection ang kagad. Without, uh, uh, without ako, without fear of the parents, no? Uh, nakita ko po yung tama yung sabi niyo, parang maraming fake news sa kalabas. Maraming maling akala na nagduktong-duktong. Uh, hindi ko lang sinasabing mali nga talaga sila. Parang sa ibang bagay, tama rin po sila. But then, bakit po Dok Lulu nawala yung dating uh, sistema na pagkapanganak pa lang binapakunahan na? Pagdating ng elementary school, binapakunahan na? Kasi ganun po ako. Siguro I was, I was with public school. Siguro kasi noon ang gobyerno talagang anda pati yung mga doktor. Anda pagdating dyan sa ano, bakuna. Ano pong nangyari? Tapos ngayon, parang wala na. Wala na ganun. Hi, Jimmy. Totoo ka. Merong tinatawag kami ng history of vaccine. Pag nagbabakuna ka, nawawala yung sakit. Tapos, ang mga tao, hindi na natatakot sa sakit kasi nawala eh. Ganyan ang nangyari sa measles. Noong 2005, sabi ko nga, nawala ang measles. Zero, zero cases, zero deaths. Samantalang before that, mga isang libo rin ang namamatay sa measles taon-taon. Noong 2005, I can tell you, nasa record yan, zero measles. Zero deaths. Ang ganda, di ba? We almost eliminated measles. Pagkatapos, ang mga tao na hindi complacent yun ang tinatawag natin. Pag hindi na nakikita yung sakit, hindi na sila natatakot. Nagiging, ang tawag, complacency ang word yan. Sa Tagalog yun. Kasi talaga, sabi nila, o, oh, ah, oh, wala yan. Hindi na pumusunta para magpabakunan. Kasi hindi na nakikita. Pati yung ano, yung tustalina, alam ko ba yun yung tinatawag na 100 day cough. Ah, nakukawawa ang mga bata pag nakita mo yun na nagtadalahin ako po. Nakakalito ng mga tayo, 24 hours, tustalina. Yung tisteria, alam ko, alam mo, matanda na ako. Yung kapanahuna namin, nakikita namin yan sa mga, uh, sa PGH, sa PGH ako, ang daming tisteria, ang daming tetanus. Kung so, wala yan. So, hindi na nakikita ng mga tao. That's when the disease will come back. It will come back with a vengeance, sabi nga natin, di ba? O ano nangyari sa Bezos? Noong 2010, nag-umpisa yan, pabagsak ang ating pagpapakuna. Ang, ang tawag nga dyan, yan yung natural history. Pag hindi mo na nakikita yung sabihan, ala, pag-asin ka na. And then, dahan-dahan, babalik, babalik yan. Ang besahay namin yan, pag hindi ka nagpatuloy ng pagpapakuna mo, babalik at babalik yan. Kaya na yung aming uh, organization, yung Philippine Foundation for Vaccination, at my dear, ito, unang-una sa buong Asia Pacific, nalang tayo na advocacy ah, para sa pagpapaguna. Kasi maraming tao, alam mo sa medical college nga, hindi dinidiscuss yan, hindi nang pakuna yan sa medical school. Maraming ang doktor, hindi alam kung ano yung pakuna. Pediatrician lang ang magaling sa pakuna. Kasi pag nga, ito ah, ito, ito tayo, diba? 
Pagka may gusto magpapakuna sa kanila, ano sabi nila? Oh, dalhin mo sa pediatrician. Kasi maraming doktor, hindi talaga marunong ng bakuna. Lalo na ang adult. Tingnan mo kung sino nagsasalita tungkol sa bakuna. Ang mga pediatrician, ang dapat ang mana, ma 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 mauno sa pagbabakuna. Pero ngayon, yun ang pasiya na marami ngayon. Sabi nga kanina ni Jean, di ba? Sinong unang nagturo sa PISMID? Sinong unang nagpuntag tayo ng immunization committee sa adult infectious. Si Misa Pagayabang, ako, di ba? Pediatrician. Si Benny, pediatrician. Ang PMA ngayon, meron ng immunization committee. Di ba? Dati wala, di ba? Oo. Oh. Ngayon meron na. Kaya ako tuwang-tuwang kay Dr. Benny at yan. Saan nagpuntar? Nagpuntar na siya ng kanyang committee. Kaya ito magiging presidente. <laughs> Totoo yan. Kasi ngayon, nakikita na ng mga tao ang kahalagahan. Dati pediatrician lang eh. Ngayon ang mga doktor ng pulmonology, si Charles Yu. O yan, eksperto sa pulmon. Sa pulmon yan, eksperto. Ang hindi ko na lang mahikaya kung minsan yung mga cardiologist. Eh, ang asawa ko cardiologist. Pero araw-araw noon, Okay, Dok. Uh, gusto ko lang po sana malawagan sa inyo kung sino po yung merong karapatan gumawa nito. Kasi during those days, na ako po yung maliit pa, meron yung listing kung ano yung mga dapat na ibakuna sa amin. Uh, Nag-umpisa po ako sa number 1 to 10. Kung ano po yung bakuna na dapat namin tanggapin, eh tinanggap ko po. Kaya salamat po dun sa mga naunay na kaisip nun. At sana po sa grupo po ninyo, there's somebody who should do that same what happened to us na very, very rare ang mga kabatch namin na merong karagdaman na nangyayon sa ngayon. Salamat po. Thank you, Dom. Sir. Good morning po. Kay, uh, I'm Benedict Abelgar ng Pilipino Hero. Kay Dr. Renu Bravo. Uh, sa patuloy na pag-task ng daily cases, uh, nakikita niyo ba na kailangan talagang ibalik yung daily question? Sa aming pong palagay, kukunin natin ang basihan ng at Kami po sa Philippine Foundation for Vaccination. Kumukuha po rin kami ng mga ebidensya. Katulong po namin ang PIDSP, ang Pediatric Infectious Disease Society of the Philippines, ang Philippine Pediatric Society, 6,000 strong pediatricians. Sila po ay nagpuno na, ay nagpalabas na ng kanilang position statement at kami naman po ay sumusuporta doon na pwede po tawagan ang ating mga decision makers, ang ating policy makers na ibalik, i-lift ang ban sa Dengpaxia. Dahil nakita naman po natin ang WHO, inilagay po yan noong July 8, 2019 and you have to get in your uh, list as one of the essential vaccines for high-risk countries. Ang Pilipinas po ang may pinakamataas na dengue incidence in this part of the world. Pinakamataas po, more than 200,000 na ang cases taon-taon. At yan po ay hindi bababa. Pwede po tumaas every 2 to 3 years, sinasabi po yan, no? Pero makikita niyo po, every 2 to 3 years, yung maximum tumataas pa rin. Kung meron kayong graph, ganyan po yan, tapos pag ano lang pag ano. Ibig sabihin po yan, ay tumataas, hindi lang po pala sa Pilipinas, globally, ito po ang sinasabi ng mga eksperto sa dengue, na global threat, one of the ten, you can log on to your WHO, global threats, the ten global threats in the world today is, uh, or one of them is dengue. Ano po yung isa? Vaccine hesitancy. Dalawa po yan na magka- partner. Yun po ang sinasabi natin. Bakit po? Kasi dumadami ang anti-vaxxer. At bakit po dumadami ang anti-vaxxer, kayo na po ang makakasagot niya. Mahabang story po kung bakit dumadami ang anti-vaxxer. Marami din po ang gusto mag-regularyo at gumawag ng dengue na hindi pa po na ang answer. In relation to that question, probably in your handout, you have also the statements of the Pediatric Society Infectious Disease and adult. But I would like also to get the opinion of the adult and the 
pediatric infectious diseases. So the paragraph referred to the statement that's prepared by the uh, Pediatric Infectious Disease Society of the Philippines and the Philippine Pediatric Society. So, uh, kung okay lang po sa inyo, uh, isa summarize ko lang po yung mga uh, important points na nakalaman dito sa statement na to uh, para atin din ma-share, maibahagi sa ating mga audience. No? So, una po na, uh, ipinaaalala na dahil uh, napakalaganap ng dengue sa ngayon, mahalaga yung tinatawag na early recognition and timely management. So, ano pong ibig sabihin nun? Uh, yun pong mga nagkakasakit, na meron pong lagna, uh, wag pong uh, magdalawang isip na magpatingin. Kasi po, kung dengue po ito, at marami na pong paraan ngayon para maging accurate ang diagnosis ng dengue, hindi na po tulad ng unang panahon na paulit-ulit pa ang blood test. No? So, unang-una, pagka nalaman po na ito ay dengue, uh, masisimulan kaagad yung tamang proseso ng dagutan. So, yun po yung tinatawag na early, early recognition. Yung timely management naman po, eh, siya yung uh, maagap at tamang pagsusuporta sa mga pasyente na kakadengge. Pangalawa, uh, sinasabi din ng aming statement na makakatulong kung lahat ay uh, sasali sa mga activities that will promote the education of patients and caregivers on dengue prevention. So, nakuulit po dito yung minatawag na 4S no, na uh, pinopromote ng DOH. Sinusuportahan po namin ito kasi uh, nakita ko lately, meron post si WHO, kung walang lamok, walang dengue. No? So, tama naman po yun. Mahirap na kalaban ng lamok sa ating nga ni Dr. Rago, yun yung unang killer or number one killer. Uh, pero tayo naman, eh, kahit pa paano may advantage po tayo din ang mas malaki kaysa lamok. So, baka pwede naman natin i-attempt na supuin. No? So, let us engage in activities that promote um, prevention of dengue among our patients and caregivers. Ang ikatlong punto ay yung tinatawag na uh, pagbibigay ng uh, other preventive measures including vaccines. So ito po, no, inulit ko po yung nabanggit kanina ni Dr. Yu, uh, hindi po uh, natin sinasabi na ito po yung sagot sa outbreak sa ngayon. Kasi po, uh, hindi po naman tulad ng measles vaccine, itong dengue vaccine, iba din po yung paraan ng pagkalat ng sakit na ito. So, maganda pong gamitin as part of our preventive strategy, pero siguro sa ngayon, kung ang gusto po natin ay immediate impact, no? katulad po nung nakita natin sa measles outbreak, uh, ang sagot po ay uh, prevention, early recognition, timely management. Ang PCT at ang PSFID nilagabas nyo ng statement at uh, masangay kami sa mga nabagitan nito para ano ang link. No? Uh, gusto ko rin kasi i-emphasize no? yung, uh, uh, yung kahalagahan na uh, unang-una makilala ng mga tao may sakit. No? pagkakaroon ng posibing dengue, lalo na sa mga nilalag na type 1 to 1 pa rin sa pasyente ko. Eh, no? Buhay niya lang, concerned talaga sila. No? Maaaring dahil sa mga edad, pero very, very crucial ay eh, ma-recognize ano ba yung mga sintomas na magtutuma sa posibing dengue. No? So, sa ganun, importante yung mabigyan sila ng advice o ano yung mga warning signs na magigit ay nalitora po ito. Very, very crucial na mabantayan mga ganitong mga sinyales para agad-agad na matukunan nila at padala sila agad sa ospital. Kung sakali, i-advise nila sila ng follow-up regularly. So, nabanggit na may mga blood tests naman ngayon, pero syempre kung hindi naman available, again, pabalik tayo sa pag-assess sa status ng mga pasyente. Pati mga pasyente mismo ka lang mabigyan ng tamang advice o anong dapat nilang bantayan. Um, so, muli, so importante-importante, uh, dapat magpakonsulta agad no, sa doktor uh, pagka may lagnat. Hindi importante may lagnat, babaliwala yun. No? Importante, masigurado na hindi siya dengue. Lalo-lalo na ngayon may epidemia. 
kasi very crucial na sigurado natin na hindi siya kung hindi. Tapos pangalawa, so nabanggit din yung Torahan ng Krim, no? yung pag-iwas, yung pag-control sa daily infection. No? Uh, yung 4S muli, yung uh, search and destroy, self-protected measures, uh, seek early consultation and say no to hugging or this indiscriminate hugging unless there is an outbreak. At siyempre, pati yung pagpapakuna, no? kung sakali yung kailangan, lalo lalo sa mga taong dati na nagkakandemi, paano na lang sila magbigyan. Kung magiging available na siya, eh, kumalilit na yung paano. Uh, three days ago, may patient ako nagdala. Matagal ko ng pasyente yung mom. Nilalag na yung son, uh, early 20s. Pero yung sister nun, no, nag-assigure na yung last year. Yung tatay, OFW sa amin. At concern na concern ko na nilalag na doon yung anak na yung daughter niya. So, pinupush ng tatay na pwede bang pabakunahan yung sister. Siyempre, nilalag na doon yung work up. Eh. Sabi ko, hindi talaga pwede. Kasi hindi siya available. So, yung kwento niya, ay eh, nauulit all over, over and over again. Kaya ulitin ko, the dengue vaccine is not for the outbreak. The dengue vaccine, every six months for three doses, is for the future. Okay? So, importante yun. Second thing is, as the case fatality rate So, totoo lang. This is a challenge to us, DMA and all the societies. Kailangan pagbutihin pa natin. And in fairness, the CFRs, the case with other rates, are dropping over the years. Pero ang paksik talaga ng kalaman natin. No? So, people must be reminded of the epidemiologic trying na talaga yung kahit infection sa nandelektro dito. Kaya ka nagkakasakit sa infection ay dahil yung vulnerability ng tao, yung infecting agent in this case, the virus in the mosquito, and the environment, in it might add, yung health system under which. So, kailangan, alagaan natin yung tatlo. Okay? So, the vaccine is para na talaga yung vulnerable people. Kaya nga yung WHO is, sino yung high risk? And obviously, kahit ano yung controversy nyo, ang zero prevalence ng dengue sa Philippines ay napakataas. Okay? And so, wala nang issue about, but uh, they have their own recommendations about who should be tested, etc. So, yun siguro ang dapat mahalaga. So, as I said, and I, I like the way our patient advocate to this. Bigyan nyo, huwag nyo ilinit sa ating mga mayayaman, yung karapatan nila. Ano, ilipad pa yung mga mayayaman para kumuha ng bakuna sa Thailand at Singapore? Bago na yung mga mahihirap? That is not fair. So that's another thing that got me. And meron akong, ano, breaking news, pero huwag nyo ako ikot. Si Excel sa Salvania is one of our uh, biggest experts, okay? Sayang wala siya dito eh, prior to the internet. Pero meron siya ang tinig, so you can verify kasi baka fake news to ha. And said, Tony Dance posted that he is okay with bringing back the zero positive vac for the vaccines for the zero positives, and he is also repu repudiating the power for exaggerating the safety concerns. You as media should confirm whether he actually said this because we are partners in clinical MP. We share in the concern of safety first, mga pasyente. But if he indeed said that, to that I think will change the picture and convince maybe the DOH that it's about time to change. I also challenge media. Ang isang nawawala ay pag-monitor ng mga pinakunahan na. Okay? Which DOH and uh, DOST CHRD should do. Natatakot kasi yung mga researchers na pag pumunta sila sa mga dengue patients, pagkakalitan sila, ayaw mag ma involve So you in media should help us, the researchers, na kumayat sila para ma-monitor para sa rate sa, sa uh, kapakanan ng mga pitakunahan. So we only have anecdotal evidence of the impact in the regions. We need real live monitoring, but we need patients to accept that they will be monitored. And this will be coming, merong kinokomisyon ng DOH dyan. Pero dapat magawa na yan, ahapon. Hindi pa, na yun. Kasi nandyan yung, yung question eh, did the vaccine campaign, kahit incomplete, even make a little dent? 800,000? Um, so, yeah, anecdotal lang ang ating epidensya, yung pinukwento ko sa hospital namin. We need hard science and evidence to show. Eh, yeah, may data sa Brazil, maganda ang data. Kung Mexico, may ang data. Pero, so, we should get our own data. So, uh, we'll ask, uh,
Actually, ang uh, PMA ko ay nandun ang po, including bag, ibigay po yung red bag siya, pag uh, yung bakuna, at pagkakatapos po ng uh, pagbabakuna, nakapunta po kami sa DOE sa nandun po yung kami, at saka nang ilans po yung red bag siya pag sinismo. At tiwala po kami doon sa mga nag-ano po nung red bag siya pag sin, nag-aral, katunayan po, si Dr. Capetti ay siya isang nominee namin sa sa Jose Rizal Awards at nanalo siya ng Jose Rizal Awards Jose Rizal Memorial Awards para sa sa, sa pananilisik sa sa research tapos siya rin ang nanalo sa sa Philippine uh, Regulation Commission yung po yung uh, outstanding uh, sa sa um, sa professionals ng apat na po apat na profession po Pilipinas kaya yung integridad po ng mga nagawa yung uh, nag-aral ng vaccine ay napakalaki po uh, ano natin kasi yung mga research nila ay kinalala sa buong mundo at na katunayan nga na uuna tayo sa, sa Asia kaya nakakalungkot po uh, uh, inaano namin sa media sana uh, ano yun po yung mga expert kung sino po talaga ang uh, nag-aral ng bakuna kung paano po binibigay ang bakuna at ano po at saka idadagdag ko po pinang isang pediatrician Uh, wag natin ilimit ang dengue sa mga lalaking bata. Kaka po ay nagkaroon ng pasyente, uh, baby, uh, newborn. Uh, pumunta po yung nanay, sinabi, tumutubo po ang kanyang breast na nagpapadete. Nung pina, pinatingnan ko po ang nanay, may dengue. Ano ba yung after 2 days, 3 days? 2 uh, days, natin din yung bata, yung newborn, 3 day old bumaba rin po ang plague there. Kaya pwede po ang dengue ay matrasmix transplacenta rin. Magaling sa nanay malilipad sa baby. Kaya ano yun po natin, kaya po kami mga mga pediatrician ay keen din po. Ang pasyente po ay pangpitong dengue na baby na nakuha sa nanay. Kaya ano yun po natin. Hindi na po naman. At importante po, nalalaman ng mga magulang ang dapat gawin sa batang may lagna. Ibig sabihin po, pag may batang may lagna, 2 to 3 days, pa-check up na po, huwag na itay na mawala ang lagnan. Kasi kung minsan po, late na, late po na na-detect, late na napupunta sa doktor, wala na pulso, uh, ang blood pressure po, wala na, saka po makakabul tayo. Yung po ang mga namapatay sa dengue, eh, late, late diagnosis po, hindi po na kagad na ano. Ano po ang gagawin ng Philippine Medical Association ngayon? na, na magkakaroon po kami ng medicine week no September, pinagdiriyo namin. At isa po ang, ang uh, kaalaman sa dengue ang paalam namin sa sa mga uh, sa 190 coupon societies po. Pinubuo po kami ng uh, 44 strong members ng Philippine Medical Association. At kalad po kami sa buong Pilipinas. At yun po i-assure natin, uh, through PSP and PSMIN, uh, i-aaroon po namin mga expert Uh, kakusapin po namin kasi mayroon po sila mga members bawat religion at sila po ang mag explain sa mga doktor sa proper management at saka po sa community po natin po yung community malensyonan sa tamang dapat gawin pagka nilalag na at isa po dyan ang aming natin kasi hindi lang po naman dengue ang ililensyon lahat po ng causes ng lagnat at isa nga doon dengue kaya pagka po ako may pasyente sasabihin ko na baka dengue, kaysa ma maiwan mo pa. Kasi lalo na sa mga endemic errors po. Pag meron po sa, katulad po sa, sa kapitbahay ng dengue, yung possibilidad na may dengue yung, yung uh, kapitbahay ay maraming possibilidad. Kasi po, maikot-ikot lang doon. Good morning, ma'am. Uh, Rafael, po sana po sa ABS. Yes. Yeah. Tara kay Dr. Brown or anyone else. Uh, since sinabi na po ni uh, Secretary Lupino na parang it will come out in 10 days the decision whether or not to pass over there, how do you see this affecting the vaccine confidence of the public considering that the DOH has been uh, stressing uh, that the vaccine confidence drop was because of the demand? Actually, since last year, if I may be uh, acknowledging PCP during the May 2018 uh, PCP forum, doon po ay pinag-usapan na namin na we have to restore vaccine trust dahil nasira yan dahil sa legpatch siya. 
tutong mga nandito, nandutin po sa forum na yon upang tumulong na ma-restore ang ating vaccine confidence. Dahil sa amit pananaw na apektuhan ng Muslims for truth, actually as early as January of 2018, at ang um, sasabi ko rin po, si Dr. Cabral, makakalimutan natin, siya po ang aming uh, respected former sec health secretary na isa sa mga Doctors for Truth na naging gabay namin din para maging malakas o magkaroon ng boses para ipaglaban na i-restore natin ang ating kumpiyansa sa bakuna. Dahil all over the world, yan po ang pinakamabisa paraan upang tayo ay maligtas sa sakit. Ang number one po is clean and safe water. Ang susunod po ang bakuna. Kaya po marami nang naligtas ang bakuna sa buong mundo. Hindi lang po dito sa Pilipinas. Pero alam niyo ba na ang Pilipinas ang isa sa four frontliners dito sa Asia. Tayo po ang unang bansa na naglagay ng rotavirus noong 2012, yung PCV, yung nungupokal vaccine noong 2012 para sa pulmonya. Kasi ang number one and two killers of children po ay pneumonia at diarrhea. Tapos dito sa baba, kita niya marami na meningitis, pneumonia, flu, lahat po yan. Pwede sa posible, pero ina-address ng ating public health and siguro hindi natin ang ano si Dr. Cabral din ng uh, chance din na magandang po si Dr. Cabral. Oh, ang kala ko na dyan ko siya. Ang dyan siya kanini na pagpala na nakuna na ako ng jeans. But siya po ang aming naging gabay. Kaya siya po ay naniniwala din sa pagpala. In fact, iyon yung kailangan ibalik. At ang pagbabalik po nitong demaksya, maliit ang bang, sa aming po palagay ay isang step forward para maibalik ang kumpiyansa ng mga tao sa bakuna. Yan din po ang sinasabi ng PMA, right? O, at bibigay ko kay Benny kasi ibalik natin ang bakuna. This is the uh, unity statement po ng ginawa namin uh, two years ago nung nagkaroon ng outbreak ng, ng measles. Uh, amidst of the recent controversies battling the country's immunization program, the major leaders of the professional medical societies under the banner of the Philippine Medical Association strongly expressed that we reiterate our full support to the DOH under the present leadership as the primary stewards and guardians of our people's health, but it's, it, is, uh, uh, it alone cannot fully achieve the enormous task of confronting the vast challenges in the health sector. Two, stand unwaveringly behind the efforts of the DOH to rebuild the public's trust in our health institution battered by the crisis in the immunization program. Three, we'll partner with the DOH and other stakeholders in launching massive information campaign in our respective communities to reduce the disinformation and hysteria. Four, call for sovereignty among the stakeholders in the healthcare industry so that we can move as one with the aim of contributing respective shares in improving the health of our people. Five, enjoy all sectors of the society to unite to ensure the success, su successful realization of all health programs of the government. Six, pledge to our people the strengthening the collaborative efforts between the private and public sectors by improving the repair system aimed to achieve the seamless healthcare delivery network. The lesson learned from our experiences should provide a better opportunity for all of us to translate into action all of the government, all of the society, all of the system approach in providing healthcare for all our people. Signed, Dr. Ireneo Bernardo III, PMP President, 2016-2018. Can I just add to the comments ni Dr. Atienza and Dr. Bravo in answer to this question? I think ako, natutuwa ako na nandun na tayo sa punto ng ating understanding about vaccines para kilalanin 
na potentially may impact ang bakuna sa problema natin to. Kasi kung hindi natin naiintindihan yung kayang gawin ng bakuna, hindi man lang natin ang pag-uusapan, eh, di ba? Tsaka I think, dahil napakaganda na naging experience natin doon sa measles outbreak, nung naging uh, part ng response natin yung pagbabakuna at nakita na rin uh, ang bilis no, ng response and improvement, syempre gusto rin natin ng ganong klaseng outcome dito sa deadly outbreak na to. Siguro ang isang kailangan lang maintindihan is hindi magkatulad yung dalawang sakit. No? Si measles, uh, ang paraan ng pagkalat ng measles ay iba sa paraan ng pagkalat ng dengue. So natural, iba din yung ating response dito sa problema to. Kaya inuulit-ulit yung vector control, inuulit-ulit yung early detection, early recognition. Kasi uh, dahil meron kasamang lamok dito sa usaping ito, uh, hindi lang makuna ang sagot. Uh, meron siyang rule, pero sa, sa, sa kung ang tanong... Okay. I, went, I went to public in the... Because sobrang natama na nung time na yun. Nung Uh, there was a lot of hysteria created by false news, some of which are still present in this room. They were the ones who... And I've heard in the past few days, kumuulit na naman, yung ilang kwento na rin dito sa radyo, may nag-broadcast sa national sa broad media. The role of the doctors to truth and public welfare is to point out, sinasabi na namin sa inyo, listen to the experts, listen to those who treat patients who have done the research. And this is a classic example of the panel you see. Huwag na kayong mag-interview nung hindi naman, hindi lang walang alam din sa topic, eh nagkadatom pa at nagbibigay ng wrong information causing the measles outbreak that black. Natakot na lahat para sa nangyayari sa Tintaxia. You, all of us, had a role in that. Tayo lang sa buong mundo nagkagulo. So, the foreigners are asking, bakit nangyayari sa Pilipinas? Only in the Philippines. Okay? But we have the tools to correct it. So, please, responsible media, kung meron kami oath to our patients, you have an oath to truth. Please. Thank you. So, again, the importance of vaccine. We know that, uh, yung smallpox was eliminated in 1977, last case in Somalia because of vaccine. We know that how powerful this is as a, as a tool. Now, in year uh, November 29, 2017, there was a declaration Now, among zero positives or those who have history of dengue of in the past, ano yun talaga yung efficacy and effectiveness na in terms of symptoms, in terms of hospitalization, and severe dengue na pa-prevent ito. Okay? But for those who are seronegative, na walang history of dengue in the past, no, it may lead to severe dengue. That's why if this thing ba siya will be uh, allowed to be used, importante po yung tinatawag na pre-screening. No? Again, siguro ang amin natin eh, um, aside from um, weighing the importance of vaccine, importante po yung diagnostic natin. Sabi nga, early diagnosis, early detection. Nang binigay po sa atin ang DOH epidemiology, 106,620 cases. Unfortunately, 41% lang po rito ang nag-test with na positive sa dengue. And only 1% lang po rito ang nagkaroon ng confirmed or tested by PCR. Therefore, importante po talaga no, that uh, this diagnostic test no, be strengthened. Bigyan din po natin talaga ng halaga na yung bawat hospitals, healthcare facilities ang bibigyan talaga ng karapat ng konto para ma-test ma natin. Why? Because dengue has a protein manifestations. Lahat ng aches, lahat ng pains, lahat ng may fever and rash, ipoconsider natin ang dengue. But then, Most often times, no, in a study conducted in Bangkok, Thailand, in 10, among 10,000 patients, 9,000 of them asymptomatic. Mayroon din mild manifestations. No? And only 1 to 5 percent po will lead to severe dengue. Again, sa mga doctors po natin, ano, yung ating capacity na, kasi once it's a early diagnosis, anticipatory management, sana 
we, we, we let me as be guided. May guidelines po tayo, may standard na dapat natin sundin. Because three more causes, common causes of death. Number one, dahil delay po pumunta sa hospital, so delay na siya na diagnose. Pangalawa, dahil po yung rehydration is very important because there is plasma leakage, no? So, that for those that would manifest as massive bleeding, kailangan po natin ng fluid solution. No, no, na po tayo sa mga plated, bronze, ribocipitate, and fresh frozen plasma. Kung may active bleeding, pack RBC, whole blood. And third, which is the most leading cause of death, is fluid overload, no? Ito yung mga obese, ito yung mga vulnerable na mga young children. So again, sa mga, sana yung, yung competency natin when it comes to knowledge and skills ng pagdadiagnose and management and dengue, strengthen din po natin ito. Okay, thank you. Hi, good afternoon. Joe Vicky Posa, inquirer. Yung recent na data from uh, DOH uh, shows na yung NCR and Region 3 lang yung regions na uh, bumaba actually yung, yung incidence of dengue and the rest of the country tumaas. Is this uh, enough evidence for our policy makers para uh, ipapatuloy yung, yung paggamit ng dengue action? But at the same time, yung kalabarsan nakita natin na halos dumote din yung number of cases. And yung, what, what do you, how do you make sense of this data? Actually, kailangan talaga suwiin mabuti yung mga kasong ganyan. Saan mababa, saan tumakas. Pero ang tinatawag nga kanina ni Chowali, yung tinatawag na observational. Kasi kung minsan, kung hindi ka talagang scientific, kung ano lang yung makita mo, paniwala ka na doon. Ganyan ang mga tao eh. So unless in-investiga mo, tinitingan mo talaga yung detalye. At sinasabi mo, oo nga, dito, dalawang area, yung isa nabigyan ng bakuna, yung isang area hindi nabigyan ng bakuna. Saan ngayon ang mas mataas? ba? Kaya nyan, meron kang tinatawag na sample size, kailangan ng statistics, yun ang ginagawa ng mga scientists. ba? Kailangan ng mas usin pa na nalisik. Pero, kung observation na, kagaya ng tanong mo, etong ihemplo, alam mo, nagtatrabaho sa Las Piñas, kasi sabi ko nga sa inyo, ako ay clinical trials, din disclose ko naman yun, for the last 30 years, I've been doing that, meron akong mga trial ng flu, ng polio, mga ganyan. Sa Las Piñas, pinakamarami ang nabigyan ng demaksya. Tinanong ko sa kanila ngayon, kamusta ang inyong dengues? Ano ngayon? Alam mo ba? Wala silang problema sa dengues. Sa mga tarang ng araw, sabi sa akin ng city health office nila, talagang sila sa isa sa pinakamarami sa 13 municipalities. Ngayon, sila rin ang pinakamarami ng bigyan ng demaksya. Pero ang sinasabi ko, observational yan. Kailangan pa ng masusi. Kaya ng tanong mo, mahirap sagutin yan eh, sabi ni Ben. Mahirap talaga. Sa mga scientists, hindi basta sasagot na yes or no. We go through a process of difficult but clear, mathematical, blah, 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 yan. Hindi madaling sagutin. Pero observational, madaling sagutin. Uh, I have to agree with what Dr. Rafo said. No? Uh, very tempting to make conclusions. Siyempre, lalo na for vaccine advocates, sasabihin namin, o ayun na, di ba? Kita na natin. Pero alam naman natin na maraming pwede posible yung explanation. I was just thinking siguro kung merong isang maitutulong itong information na ito, mag matutulungan itong information na ito, is actually to reassure the parents. Kasi uh, medyo hindi natin naririnig yung boses nila. Yung mga pamilya na may mga anak na napakunahan dati ang dengue vaccine, ano na kaya yung nararamdaman nila ngayon? Ay po, no? the fact na nakita nila na out of the three regions kung saan nagbigay ng bakuna, dalawa doon ay wala sa top 10, eh, sana naman nare-reassure sila na siguro kahit pa paano may pakinabang yung natanggap ng anak ko. Uh, but again, no, we really need to continue monitoring kasi unfortunately, hindi naman natin na kompleto yung tatlong dosis sa karamihan ng mga bata. Hindi rin natin alam kung uh, anong klaseng protection ang matatanggap nila. So siguro yung appeal ko lang, uh, gamitin natin itong pagkakataon na to dahil uh, nagkaroon na nga ng outbreak 
na mapantayan natin ang gusto, yung mga napakunahan para yung mga kailangan ng tulong pagbigyan natin kaagad, yun namang naprotektahan, magamit natin yung information para masupport ang programa kung ito ay ikutumin natin. May recommendation po ba kayo kung uh, yung, if ever na bumalik yung lymphatia, sino dapat mag-shoulder ng testing ng mga zero positive para sila lang yung mabigyan ng, ng, ng vaccine. And yung mga, yung mga positions natin ngayon, uh, may effort na ba to talk to policy makers?
sinasabi na namin ng iba na kailangan tayo magkaroon ng isang tunay, multidisciplinary, maraming eksperto. Kagaya ng WHO, yan ang tinagawa ng WHO. Magtipon-tipon yung tunay na eksperto. May epidemiologist, may pediatrician, may infectious disease, merong microbiologist, may public health, merong tinatawag tayo health economist. Nagpupulong-pulong yan upang magbigay ng desisyon, mag-recommend na sa Department of Health sa ating uh, Secretary of Health. At yung grupo niya na tinatawag na NITAG, National Immunization Technical Advisory Group. Yun ang sinasabi ng WHO na sa lahat ng bayan. Dahil ang bakuna ay napaka-komplikadong bagay. Yung mga sakit, kagaya ng dengue, sabi nga ni Ana, hindi madaling intindihin. Hindi yung kagaya ng misaf. Kung misaf, madaling intindihin. Isang strain lang yan. Yung stereotype, apat sa dengue. At kung siya ay maging sigil sa pangalawang infection, hindi kagaya ng misaf. Sa misaf, pag nagkaroon ka, sa bawat isa na magkaroon ng misaf, makakahawa siya sa labing dalawa. Yun ang tinatawag na transmissibility factor. Yan ang sinasabi na pag nagkasakit ka ng measles, makakahawa ka sa laming dalawa. Sa din, may hindi pa alam. Kaya sa measles, sinasabi natin, para maiwasan ng sakit, dapat 95% ang coverage. Sa din, may marami pang sagot, katanong na, ka, na hindi pa nasasagot. At yan ang dahilan kung bakit kailangan maraming eksperto. Hindi the fake expert, hindi the sudo experts. Kasi napaka-difficult in intindihin ang dengue. Mas isis ka thousand na sinasabi natin na ako yung baka guru sa dengue. 82 years old na siya. Hindi pa rin niya ma-i-explain ng buong ka-comprehensive ka ang tungkol sa dengue. Maraming eksperto ang minsan nga nag-aaway sila. Doon dapat gamitin ang expertise ng mga eksperto pag-usapan at saka magbigay ng rekomendasyon. And these experts, by the way, should be independent. Yun ang sinasabi ng WHO. We have to have independent experts. Pero hindi ibig sabihin nun, eh yung experts, eh hindi yun yung gumawa ng pananaliksik. Hindi ibig sabihin nun, porket ikaw ay uh, naging, uh, naging consultant sa topic na yan, eh, et siya kuwera ka na. Kasi yun talaga ang experts. Ang mga experts yun talaga nananaliksik. Eh bakit natin sila i-et siya kuwera? Siguro eh, uh, hindi natin naririnig si ano eh. Bernie? Ang para lang sa pasyente at sa tapos sa pamilya, talagang concern ay hindi sila mahirapan, hindi na sila ma-burden sa itong disease at sana ay magka-access sila sa medisina kung ito ay magiging available, sana ay mabigyan ng korean. Access to medicine talaga ang concern ng pasyente. And information para makagawa ng informed decision ang mga pasyente at ang mga magulang. So tama yung ginagawa ko ng ating mga medical experts na talagang ine-educate nila ang itang mga pasyente at ang papo ko ay tumutulong sa pag-educate. Pero bottom line is, it's their decision get that medicine but the thing is, it should be accessible. Yun po. Um, we're going to entertain one last question and then for our friends from the press, you can actually uh, uh, interview uh, one of our panelists no? uh, after the, uh, this session. No? Uh, good morning uh, from ABS-CBN. Uh, yeah. um, uh, namin, siguro malaman uh, from our different our, um, uh, groups of doctors, kung kayo po ba ay sangayon na po na ibalik yung Thank you, Akshia. Siguro ko po sabihin, yes sa akin. Isang word lang. Isang word lang. Yes or no? 
pediatrics. So, yes, ma'am. Yeah, what's your question? So, siguro, kasi, uh, um, yes, can we say that Yes, the qualified. Are you talking about the public health program? Are you talking yes. about yes. Bucks, yeah. That's not our decision to make. No. What we're saying is that it should be made available for patients who are qualified to receive it. Pero yung pagbabalik mo sa dati po yung the public program, that's what you're asking. That's not our decision to make. Yes, ma'am. It's not your decision to make, but are you of support to include it in the public? Because we can... Uh, this year's your mic. Mike. Actually, there is this as expert, no? Um, work group on the Nibaksha. Now, on May 2019, they approved the licensure of this Nibaksha na ginagamit na po sa maraming bansa except the Philippines because of this controversy on 133 cases who were vaccinated. Um, there is still an ongoing uh, research, no? kasi this is a five-year study. So meron po sa October 2019 para sa preliminary recommendation with regards to the infection. And the final decision, no? final decision, recommendation, and voting will be made on February 2020. So ito po yung sinasabi ng ating Department of Health na antayin natin yung mga studies din. Even though malakan niya may say yun so na, um, na antayin natin yung resulta ito. No? And then siguro sa site ng government, pwede nilang i-proceed yun kasi nalit nga po yung CPR. Pero dahil maraming bansa na po ang gumagamit and the Philippines is hyper-endemic, we have 456 death cases. Ang tanong lang po dito, baka pwede naman po ng mga private market, no? Yung mga, those na, na yung mga pasyente na talagang interested, no? And those who are already zero positive, na alam naman natin efficacious siya, proven na ito ay effective, mabigyan din po ng opportunity na maibigay dito. Okay? Because yung severe dengue nga natin, mataas ang case fatality rate natin. Pinaka, pangatlo po tayo sa pinakamataas. Number one na ito sa Puerto Rico. No? Um, second ay Indonesia at pumapangatlo po tayo. So yun po lang naman ang mga experts natin, mga IDs natin sa PMA. No? Yun hindi hiling lang kung nakali-sakali mapagbigyan. Maging choice naman ito on the private. Thank you, Dr. Mutong. Now I'd like to ask for um, parting words no? or um, take home message from each of our uh, speakers. Parang last ano na po niyo statement. Probably, I just have to summarize na lang siguro ano yung natago na natin. No? So we recognize the importance of the dengue uh, infection. The burden of illness was uh, expounded by Dr. Charles Yu during the economic burden, no? yung nagastos ng field health, at saka yung number of cases approximately parang the same na rin ng tuberculosis. And then second, uh, the pediatrics and the adult society emphasize the importance of early recognition, early diagnosis, okay? Because in an outbreak, maraming pasyente mag mag magkasintomas, the early they go to the health centers, they go to the hospitals, mag-prevent natin yung severity complication ng dengue, okay? We call that timely management. And then we also implied there are warning signs na pinakailangan malalaman ng mga parents or yung mga merong dengue na pag meron na silang ganito, they have to go to the hospital or seek consult to sa mga doctor. And then we also emphasize the importance of prevention, yung 4S. Sabi ni Dr. Ana na wala tayong magagawa. We have to follow that because it's still the most important aspect of prevention, which is vector control. But on the other hand, since the other vulnerable uh, individual is the host, yung tao, then there is also one thing that can protect the individual, which is the vaccine, and was uh, uh, expounded on by Benny and Dr. Uh, 
uh, Bravo. Ko, no? So I think very important itong mga mensahe na to na hopefully you can somehow make this uh, emphasis doon sa mga report ninyo no? because it's one way of getting back vaccine confidence by knowing the fact, knowing the truth about the pandemic. So with that, we'd like to end today's PCP Health Forum. So again, if you'd like to take sound bites of each of our speakers, you can approach them individually if they are available. Thank you. I have to give him one sound bite I can do. It is high time we give the ban on Denmark and make it available for the Filipinos. That's all.